Okay, so what did I drag, drag home this time? I was out looking around again and I found this uh, Rockwell Model 9 9 inch table saw. Again, heavy cast metal. Very heavy duty. Uh, I had to take it apart to move it. It came with a stand. Came with uh, two wings. Uh, the rails, the pipe, the rails for the rip fence. And a one horsepower Rockwell motor mounted on it with the original bracket. So pretty much intact. It has the miter guide, it has the rip fence. Uh, looks like everything's here. Uh, the inside is in pretty good shape. It's just really dirty and things are hard to turn. You can see the uh, amount of crud and buildup on this. So another full disassembly and get this thing cleaned up, get the rust off the table and see how this one works. Here's another before picture. I thought I'd flip it over and shoot this from the bottom looking in. Flipped it over on its back, but you can see there's quite a bit of buildup. If you ever wondered where petrified wood comes from, well, I think I found the source. This uh, caked on sawdust pretty much qualifies as uh, petrified wood, I think. So, there's the insides before, quite a bit of rust, and quite a bit of caked on dried sawdust. One of the first assessments we have to make here is the bearings. And I can already tell from the feeling, very stiff, very rough, uh, hard to turn, and jumpy. Uh, both the bearings are going to have to be replaced in this. That's not terrible news. They're available. And it's just a piece of work and some money to invest in it. Uh, but at any rate, that's an early check because if you need bearings and can't get them, the restoration stops. Well, with the handles uh, on the cranks removed and the flanges removed, those will be able to pull through now. We should be able to move this outer shell out of the way. Nice long extension down into the bottom there. And we can get those nuts. There's only three because one of them's missing. And 
let's see if we can snake this off the side. There we go. Right, with the outer shell off, now we have four bolts that hold the frame onto the top. We'll move those and we'll be down where we can start some disassembly. wrench is too tight. We can come in here, those nuts are tightened down too much. Put a wrench on it and tap it with a hammer. Just get them loose. Once they're loose, we can just pull them out with the socket. Alright, so we've got the piece ready to take off here. I've loosened up the set screw on the pulley and persuaded it to come off. You don't want to lose the key. This, this is a keyed pulley. It's not, uh, not held in place by the set screw, uh, but it's positioned with the, with the key. And we've got two things going on down in here. One is there's a nut holding the shaft on, so the shaft goes that direction, but the bearing itself is held in with a nut around the outside of this right here that's going to take a spanner wrench. And just offhand, I don't have one that size, so we'll either have to improvise or order one. But in the meantime, that nut should come off just fine. It's a 7 8 and we should be able to get that off with uh, with an impact driver. And there we go. So that part's done. Now we have to work on that uh, outside collar and a spanner wrench. See if we can get that bearing out. Okay, with that nut removed. We need to get that shaft to go through. I've let this soak for a little bit with WD-40 in both sides because that shaft is kind of dirty and rusted right there. And it's got kind of a cover that goes over the shaft right on this. But what we ought to be able to do is uh, use a piece of wood because we don't want to damage that shaft. There we go. And that drops our spindle out and the bearing came out with it on that side so there's no retainer nut on that side it's just held in place pulling towards this side and I still have to get the spanner and get this one off to get the bearing out that side I've got some on order the bearings are uh, available on Amazon so should have a set of bearings here oh possibly by Wednesday like three days, three, four days from now. And we'll get back to it. So this retainer nut that's holding this bearing in has got a notch on opposing sides and you can get a spanner wrench that has the mating piece for that goes down in and you can loosen that up. But if this is not in there too tight, and it's not frozen up or uh, gummed up. Something I learned from a machinist one time. You can sometimes take a punch and go right in here. Let's come out just a little bit. You can put a punch in here into that notch and tap it and chase that around and it's, it has come loose. So, sometimes you improvise, but it looks like that uh, retainer is going to come out pretty easily. Uh, while I had this out, I was looking at the other bearing, and the bearing on, on the saw blade side is smooth. It feels fine. This one down in 
this side on the pulley side is awful. So uh, I'm going to replace them both, but this is the real problem. And with disassembly done, we move into the cleaning phase now since we're waiting for bearings to come in. And it started with the shaft, and I've got it cleaned up. Uh, put it in the lathe, chucked it up so I could uh, smooth out the races where the bearings run and get all the rust off of it, get it polished up. Uh, the bearings, of course, are going to be replaced. This is the part that goes in the middle of the shaft. And it's the spacer between the bearings. And I just thought I'd show you. Uh, half of it I've already cleaned. I put that over on my wire brush on my bench grinder. And just buff that out and get that rust off of there. Then I'll uh, coat that with some WD-40 rust preventative. And it's not the regular WD-40. They have a rust preventative formula in another, uh, another type of can. So I'll use that on this and it'll keep this from re-rusting. Uh, then we'll move to other parts uh, like this. These all require complete cleaning. I'm not going to repaint them, but that needs to be degreased, brushed. And some of the jobs I'll just use a hand brush on some others. A wire brush on the drill uh, is pretty handy. But big jobs move over to the bench. Well, these two pieces of pipe are the front and back rails that the rip fence rides on. You can see they're fairly rusty. They were black at one time, but uh, most of that's gone and mostly rust. I wiped it down some with the Scotch-Brite pad and I got some of the rust off. But then I put it in the lathe and spun it and used some emery paper. And I think you'll agree, that's starting to look much better. I'm going to just see if I can step back here. Yes. Uh, so I've got it held on one end with the tailstock with a live center and on the other end held in the chuck. So it's not going anywhere. It can't come loose. Uh, but I'm going to show you how we're going to clean this. And I'll be using these strips of emery paper. I've got them in different grits. This one is uh, number 80. It's pretty coarse. So I'm going to use that to get most of that rust off. I think you'll agree that that looks a lot better. You can read the numbers on it and we're rid of all of the rust and most of the paint. I'll flip it over and get the other end uh, and then do the second one. But it takes a lot of work doing that by hand if you just go around it with emery paper and rub it down, which you can do. Uh, but using these uh, strips, you keep feeding new uh, grit up onto that as it wears out because that starts to clog up and, and wear down. So you keep feeding it some new emery paper and it uh, cuts into it pretty good. Well, these two connecting pieces connects the front to the rear uh, part of that main frame are really rusty. I don't know if we can make that out or not, but they are really rusty. So I took, got the nuts loose on both ends. Those are just bolted in place, bolts the front to the back. And uh, like I say, took a air hammer to that uh, impact wrench, got those nuts loose. We'll disassemble those. And these are small enough. Uh, we can probably just wire brush them. Could put them in the lathe, but maybe just wire brush. Yeah, I'm making progress here. 
those nuts had to come off with the impact driver, but you can see these shafts. I ended up putting those in the lathe and running them there again because it just went so much faster to get that rust off. So I cleaned up the ends of the shaft, got both of the plates cleaned up, Still need to uh, press the bearings in, put this shaft back, and uh, unmount this to do it. But uh, wire brushed and cleaned up uh, the two shafts that raise and lower the blade and tilt the blade. This is the tilt mechanism. Cleaned up the gears, took everything apart, cleaned out the inside, re-oiled it, and uh, just about ready to put this one back together. Still waiting on the bearings. As you can see, the bed's fairly rusty uh, and fairly deep. What I'm going to use is this die grinder, a mini die grinder, driven by compressed air. It's got a pad on the end that is interchangeable. I've got a whole bag full of uh, replacements. And they come in uh, coarse, medium, and fine. And they just go right on the end and twist. So you can change them out pretty quickly. Uh, the more aggressive ones uh, will go through that rust pretty quickly. I'm going to do some on this corner. I'm not going to show the whole video of the whole thing because it's going to take a while. But I'll show you how this thing works. And I like it because it's much faster, much more powerful than a, uh, than a drill or, or even an electric sander or grinder. And it stays cool because there's air going through it. There's no electric motor in here. It's all done with compressed air. So I'll get started on this and show you what it looks like. Well, there's part of the corner done. You can start to appreciate it better as we get over here into some light. That may be too much light, but that is now shiny. Nice, smooth, shiny metal. There we go. Start to see some of it now. It's smoothed out and has a good feel. Does not have the rough texture of the rust. So we'll just go through and polish this whole bed out. Getting ready to install the bearings. And to do that, I want to be able to push this bearing into the position that it goes in, which is very snug. It's a very close fit. Well, to do that, you want to push on the outside ring of the bearing without putting any pressure on the inside. Because the inside makes contact through the balls that are in the bearing. So you don't want to apply force to those. You can damage them, chip them, knock them out of place. You always want to apply all of your force to the outside edge. Uh, there are tools made for that. Some people get sockets out of their uh, uh, tool kit that will just fit in there. So the tool that drives this in should be just smaller than the outside diameter of the bearing and should have a pin that keeps it centered. That keeps it from wandering off and getting into this center section that's the seal. So I'm going to make that tool because I don't have one for this bearing and I'm going to make that on the lathe. So we want to know the inside diameter of that bearing and it's uh, 0.668. So I'm going to turn a, a portion of this down to just smaller than that and that'll give us the piece that mates or that uh, protrudes through the center of this. Okay, that fits in there very nicely. I also cut a little bit of a relief back underneath that so only the edge will ride on the bearing 
and none of it will touch the inside part of the race. Now we turn the outside down to just under the diameter of the bearing so it will fit into the housing without interfering as we drive the bearing in. Outside dimension is 1.562 and here it's 1.544 so it's just small enough you can feel a little bit of a lip so that won't uh, hang up or interfere driving this in. Yeah, we got a surprise in the mail today. I wasn't expecting the bearings to come in until Tuesday or Wednesday but there they are and they feel really good so here's the order of assembly the shaft goes in here the two bearings are pressed into position here nut goes on the end to hold the blade there is a, uh, a spring washer that goes in front of this one uh, to keep tension on it then a spacer and the other uh, bearing. That spacer allows those two uh, bearings to be pulled tight together and uh, not put any pressure on that center. So that, that center spacer is important. And then a nut goes on to hold that together, pinch those, uh, squeeze those together on the shaft. Uh, the collar that we looked at, the retainer, holds that bearing in place in the end of this uh, assembly and then the pulley goes on that end. So let's give this a shot get that first bearing put in. To make preparation for this I've got this mounted in a vise but I don't want to squeeze it so tight to hold it uh, for hammering that in or driving it in. So I've got wood supporting underneath it there's a block of wood under this uh, under this workpiece, and then I've got it clamped just enough to hold it steady, but not enough to deform the metal. Right, I've cleaned out where the bearing is going. There is a spring washer that goes in first, then the bearing goes in. I've uh, cleaned that out, and that's starting to drop right in. That's it's a snug fit, but it's it's going in. Wow, that was pretty easy. I do have the tool to drive that in. We'll just kind of seat it. Until I can feel that start to... Uh, feels pretty solid right there. Okay, well, easy enough. First one done. Uh, we'll flip that over and get the second one put in. Okay, well let's see if this second one goes in as easy. I've cleaned this out pretty good. I uh, wire brushed it with a Dremel with a, a wire brush. Got that clean. Applied a, a thin amount of WD-40 both to the inside here and to the bearing. I just want a light amount of oil on that. You don't want to... Uh, get too much on it. All right, so it's a little snugger than the other side, so let's see if we can encourage that to go in. I'm going to go all the way around the outside. I kind of drove it in the center to get it to go in straight. But now we'll go around the outside, make sure it's seated. And you can kind of feel when that uh, bottoms out. And that feels really good. Okay, on to the retainer. 
and then we'll work on getting the shaft in. Well, minor oops, no big deal, but I discovered that the spacer, which goes in the middle, uh, needs to be in place before you put both bearings in. Fortunately, the first one slides in and out really easy, so I just tapped it back out. And what I'm going to do, though, is change up the procedure just a little bit. I've gone ahead and uh, just tapped the uh, bearing into place on the shaft up against the arbor that holds the saw blade right here. And I just did that by coming down alongside you. Now on this one, you want to drive the center part down, not the outside race, because that's where the force is. And just use the wood block alternating sides and go on to all four quadrants there, tapping it down. And it just tapped into place real easy. So the next thing is, spring is in place, spacer is in place. And that pretty much went together as a hand fit. We'll just make sure that's up and snug. And then we have a nut to go on that squeezes the two bearings together. And that's pretty much it we have a rebuilt shaft assembly with two new bearings. Well, going back together is pretty much just reverse order everything you did. So I mounted things back into the uh, main frame of the saw here. Attached the uh, screw and the crank and the height adjustment for the blade is working. There we go. Everything's nice and smooth. Feels good. Uh, we'll continue that. Uh, one of the next steps will be to mount this back to the uh, top and put the cover around it. So now as we start reassembly, I'll get into an area here that develops controversy. What kind of grease or lubricant for these moving parts? It's a dusty environment. Some people use things that don't attract dust. Uh, personally, I use one lubricant on my automobile, my machines, and on my woodworking equipment. This is white lithium grease. I apply it with a brush, a thin coat to all the surfaces they're going to touch other metal. I'll do the same thing to the tracks and the worm gears. Uh, you can go on YouTube and find endless hours of debate of what to use. I'm just telling you what I use, not what you should use. Well, once we've removed that assembly from the saw, the uh, blade assembly and carriage and all that, we have to make sure it goes back in and lines up. So I've made a jig to set my table up on end because it's a real pain to have to work from the underside where you adjust to the top side where you check it. So I've got mine where I can get around to both sides and I don't have the cover on it yet. So I have access to everything. First check is, is the saw blade centered in the opening? and it looks pretty centered to me. I can move those mounts on the trunnion uh, back and forth until I get that centered. The next step will be to make sure that it's parallel to the miter guides so that we've set the bed and the blade perfectly uh, parallel. Okay, so here's how we're gonna check that blade. I've got a piece of wood in the miter guide. I've got my square my machine is square. I've adjusted that out where it just touches the blade and I'm pushing inward on this so I'm referencing the inside edge of that guide and I run that square up and down and I see that I touch just barely at the top and it's off by just a few thousandths 
and if I rotate it, it touches down there. There's a possibility the blade has more than a thousandth or two of uh, warp to it. So I'm going to try and find a couple of different spots to measure, but ultimately I want one end of the blade and the other end of the blade just about exactly the same distance from the miter track. Well, another check that's handy to make with the saw in this orientation is to be sure the blade is actually perpendicular to the bed. So I have the square writing on the bed, come up and touch the blade and there should be no gap at either end uh, and should touch it flat as I come up to it. And it is, and the way you get it there is you adjust the tilt, the worm gear and the crank until it's square and then this saw has a set right here. Loosen the nut and set the uh, screw in to stop the carriage right at square. So if you've taken it to 45 degrees and you want to come back to square, you go until it stops and you're back where you want to be. So nice for being able to go from one to the other without having to stop and check and readjust. Well, we have the saw up in this position. Also a great time to go in here and apply lubricant to the gears. I've got the uh, worm gear and the uh, gear that follows it. And I've applied some lithium to that also. So, great time to do that when it's accessible and easy to see. Now the saw went back together. We just reversed the order of uh, disassembly. Got it all back together and running. I'll have a video of it uh, running here in just a moment. Uh, but pretty much done for this project. Looks like uh, I'll have to go out and find something else, see what other treasures I can find that are rusty and dusty and need to be cleaned up and fixed. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.